What's up, everyone? I'm James Lynch, and this is Early Look, the show where I take a look at an upcoming notable fight. And on today's edition, we're going to be previewing the welterweight fight at UFC 280 between Bilal Muhammad and Sean Brady. But before I give you my preview and pick, make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Those three things, the trifecta, really does help out this channel big time. Let's get into today's preview. Really excited about this one. Blah Muhammad, Sean Brady. Uh, figured this would have been on the main card. They've actually regulated it to the prelims. I think it just goes to show how stacked this card is. Um, and uh, one other note uh, as well before we get into this is this fight was supposed to take place on the Stephen Thompson and Jeff Neal fight, or Jeff Neal card, I should say, back in December of 2020. Brady withdrawing due to undisclosed reasons. I think it was an injury, but they didn't actually list it on Tapology. So a bit of history here, but really excited for this matchup. Um, between these two welterweights. Okay, we're going to start first with Bilal Muhammad. Remember the name, Bilal Muhammad. Okay, Bilal Muhammad, as you can see there, 21-3 and three record with one no contest. He's got four knockouts, one submission, and 16 decision victories. He's 34 years old. He's 5'11 with a 72-inch reach, so he'll have a one-inch height advantage in this fight, but that's the only advantage he will have. Uh, he's the number five-ranked UFC welterweight. He's a BJJ purple belt. Uh, he's the former Titan FC welterweight champion. This is back when Titan was sending you know just a ton of fighters to the UFC, so back then it was very well earned him getting that title. Uh, Bilal Muhammad's got performance performance of the night one time against Takashi Sato. He's got fight of the night one time against Alan Joban. He's got the fourth fourth highest decision win per win percentage uh, in the UFC uh, with 10 decision wins, 12 decision, 10 decision wins with 12 wins, 83.3%. That makes any sense there for you math guys out there. And he's also tied for sixth in most unanimous decision wins in UFC history. So Blah Muhammad uh, putting in the work. He's, he's been going to the distance a lot in his fights. Now, Blah Muhammad, if you look at here, he made his amateur debut back in uh, September of 2010. And a bit of a weird thing. So he made his debut in uh, September 2010. Didn't fight again until March of 2012. So I'm not sure the issue there. I've actually never asked him that in an interview. I'd be curious to know the reason why. Uh, but yeah, a little bit of a gap there. And then he ended up making his uh, professional MMA MMA debut shortly after that in August of 2012. He made his UFC debut in July of 2016. A great fight with Alan Joban. He didn't end up winning, but it was a very entertaining matchup. It was actually at that card. That was the Eddie Alvarez and Rafael Dos Anjos card uh, back in the day. Uh, Bilal Muhammad is 12 and three in the in the UFC. He's got three stoppages. Some notable wins for Bilal, or mainly his last three fights: uh, Damian Maya, Stephen Thompson, and Vicente Luque. Outside of that, I mean, there's some names on here you'll recognize, um, but you know, Randy Randy Brown was one I was debating putting on this list, but Randy was only nine and one at the time. I don't think he's really a household name or sort of a notable win there. And then some losses that Bilal's had. We mentioned the three losses there: Alan Joban, Vicente Luque, where Luque actually finished him in the first round, and then Jeff Neal was his last loss. So. Uh, uh, again, one of the things you can definitely say about Bilal, he's been fighting really solid opposition throughout his UFC career. Uh, Bilal's only had a couple injuries. Uh, actually, he's only had one injury that forced him out of, out of uh, fight. Uh, he was actually supposed to take on Seleski at UFC Fight Night 137 back in September of 2018. He had an undisclosed injury for that. And then he was supposed to fight Diego Lima the first time back in December. That was a COVID test, a positive COVID test that took him out of that fight. So pretty healthy overall, pretty active. You look at it here, he's fighting at least two, three times a year, which is great. Um, he's had two layoffs in his UFC career. We'll start with the first one. Uh, going from Lyman Good here to Diego Lima, there was a 232-day um, layoff. And then going from um, Chancer Encounter, sorry, backing up a bit, Chancer Encounter to Jeff Neal, there was a 232-day uh, layoff. So 232, 232-day 232 layoff for Chancer Encounter to Jeff Neal, and then from Lyman Good to uh, Diego Lima, 238 days. Uh, Blah Muhammad, despite how many decision wins he's had, he's never been in really any close fights. It's either he clearly won or clearly lost. Um, so yeah, no debates there. And that's pretty much it for Bilal Muhammad. Um, I mentioned some of the accolades there, you know, BJJ purple belt. Uh, Bilal Muhammad right now training at Valley Flow Striking, was training a lot at Rufus Sport, but the band is sort of broken up over there. So I don't believe he's training out there. And I know he's done some training in Vegas too, but I think just for this fight, uh, pretty much back home in his home, uh, home uh, city of Chicago, uh, training at Valley Flow Striking over there. Okay, let's get to his opponent, Sean Brady. Again, a bit of a shorter breakdown here today because there's not a ton to work with. Uh, Sean Brady, 15-0 record, as you can see here. He's the number eighth ranked UFC bantamweight. Uh, Sean Brady has uh, four wins by submission. He's got three knockouts and eight decisions. Uh, he's 29 years old. 
He'll be 30 in November, as you can see here. He's 5'10 with a 72.5 inch reach. So he's four years younger than Bilal Muhammad and will have a 0.5 reach advantage in this fight. Uh, Got to mention the fact that Sean Brady is a former CFFC welterweight champion. That is one of the best regional promotions on the planet. Uh, you know, that that's one thing you can say with Brady is that he definitely earned his way to the UFC. It wasn't like a contender series thing where won a couple fights and got in. No, he had to earn his way. And he did that by becoming the CFFC welterweight champion. He trains at a Henzo Gracie Philly. And Sean Brady has a BJJ black belt under Daniel Gracie. So Brady, at least as far as the accolades go, has a better ground game than Bilal Muhammad because Bilal Muhammad's only a purple belt. Sean Brady is a black belt. And Sean Brady has only had performance of the night one time against Christian Aguilera. Uh, if you go back to August of 2012, that was the uh, time that uh, Sean Brady made his um, amateur debut. He actually won that fight in nine seconds. I'd love to find footage of that. And then he made his pro debut in August of 2014, where he knocked out his opponent in 33 seconds. So again, doesn't like getting paid by the hour, at least earlier on in his career. He was uh, going out there and get qu getting quick finishes. And then, um, by the way, he fought a guy named Rocky Edwards. How interesting is that? That we have Leon Rocky Edwards in the UFC. Um, anyways, he ended up making his debut, his UFC debut in October of 2019. So a bit of a late, uh, UFC debut for him. And just to give you an idea of how much more experience Bilal has, Bilal had already had 10 UFC fights by the time Sean Brady had made his UFC debut. So just put, putting that in a little bit of context. Uh, Sean Brady is 5-0 and in the UFC. His only notable win really is Michael Chiesa. I guess you could put Jake Matthews on there since he was an Ultimate Fighter, uh, winner, but, um... You know, Matthews isn't ranked right. At least, I, yeah, he's not. I don't think he's ranked right now, so we can't really count him there. And then, you know, a lot of these opponents, uh, Nardiev, Aguilera, not in the UFC anymore. Kies is ranked. That's why we had to put him on there. Court McGee's not ranked, but uh, again, that was a good win in his UFC debut. And then Brady hasn't lost. So there isn't really much to talk about there as far as any of his key losses here. The one thing with Sean Brady, ever since he's made his debut, you see how active he's been. Uh, you know, just the one fight in 2019, because that was later in the year. Two fights in 2020, two fi two, three fights in 2021, and then, um, sorry, two fights in 2021. I hate how they put the grappling fights on here, by the way. Pet peeve of mine on, uh, on Tapology. I think they should make those separate. And then, um, yeah, Blah Muhammad obviously will be his uh, just his first fight this year, so he hasn't fought. So actually, that's not true. The only layoff he would have had was the Kiesa fight to Blah Muhammad. It's going to be uh, close to a year since he fought. I don't know the exact uh numbers here but uh, i forgot to add up the tally there but uh, if you math wizards want to do that from november uh, 20th 2021 to october 10th 2022 we can do the math on that one so a bit of a layoff for brady coming into this fight uh as far as injuries he's only had one injury in the octagon and that was against uh kevin lee he was supposed to remember lee got a uh, rib injury and then he was supposed to rematch lee later that year and then he had an undisclosed injury as well so not really sure what happened in that although i will mention after speaking to brady ahead of this fight um he did have no surgery he had an issue with his nostril he's only able to bring other one nostril that's why a lot of people fixate on the michael Chiesa fight saying oh he had bad cardio in that third round well According to him, and again, I'm not a doctor, but I'll let you guys decide for yourself. He believes his cardio will be a lot better because he actually fixed that in his nose. So he said, basically, you know, for a lot of his fights, he's been breathing out of one nostril. He broke his nose years ago. He finally got it corrected. And he's just saying right now that his cardio is off the charts. So don't think that'll be an issue in this three round fight. Okay, let's take a look at the odds here. A lot of the books having Sean Brady as the favorite. I believe he opened as the, oh yeah, he did open as the favorite. For some reason, I thought he opened as the underdog, but I remember at one point he was the underdog. I think the line is sort of gone back and forth here but if you look at like the reference uh yeah so some books had him opened at my, uh, plus 190 and now he's been bet up to minus 150 so how am i going to go in this one who is going to be my pick well i will tell you that one second here so this is whoops i didn't mean to do that i meant to get back in the monitor there we go uh, that, that's what i wanted to do so yeah really tough fight um you know because again both these guys have really good wrestling um they both have good stand up and, and I think the cardio is both good as well. Again, I'm going to I'm going to lean to the side of Brady that says that his cardio issues are, are not going to be a problem here. Uh, Brady's never lost, which can be good or bad. It can be good in the sense that, hey, this guy's beaten everyone. It can be bad in that, hey, he hasn't been tested. He doesn't know how to deal with adversity. We'll sort of figure it out there. Uh, he is on a team that is on quite the roll right now. You know, at the time of recording this, he's got Pat Sabatini, who's undefeated in the UFC. You've got Jeremiah Wells, who's looked outstanding in the UFC. Um, Andre Petrosky, who's coming off a big win over Nick Maximoff. So he's at, at an extremely good camp here. That's got to be a positive going into this fight. And, you know, physically and even age-wise, I mean, Brady is a little bit younger here, but physically they're pretty similar in terms of what, uh, you know, the height and reach and, and all the different stuff. There's no major advantages in there. Like I said, I think they're both wrestlers. Both have good stand-up. Both have some submission wins as well. I wouldn't say any of them, e either fighter excels in one particular area. Like, you know, with a certain fighter like a... 
I don't know, just thinking like a, uh, you know, like a Hamza Chimaya, for example, who we just saw last weekend at UFC 279. Like he's got a great ground game. We saw him get a nice submission over Kevin Holland, right? So we know that that's like a plus that he has. Whereas like these two guys, I don't think they excel in one particular area. They're just very good, well-rounded fighters overall. So this is going to be a tough fight. I will say this. I do not think we'll see a finish in this fight. I think this is going to go down to the wire. Both guys extremely durable. Brady never lost, never been finished. And Bilal's had one loss uh, by stoppage against Vicente Luque. And that was in the first round. But then he sort of proved that point in the rematch with Luque by taking him out. Again, Bilal's fought the better opposition. So I could see some people saying, okay, maybe he's been a little bit more proven here. But I'm going to take a little different uh, approach with Bilal's last two, last three wins, I should say, that, that I think are important for the context here. So, and it's unfortunate the Leon Edwards fight didn't end up, you know, coming to fruition uh, with an ending in the eye poke because, uh, you know, I really think that was the, the best test that Bilal was going to have to figure out how good he is. I still have my doubts on how good Bilal is, and, and this is why. So he fights Damian Maya. He fought him to a decision. I mean, let's call it like it is. It was not a very good fight. And I think that was an opportunity if Bilal really wanted to separate himself from the pack, if he would have finished that fight. We saw Gilbert Burns finish Damian Maya. And granted, Burns has more knockout power than Bilal. But I feel like it was the type of win where, yeah, he was supposed to get the win, but he didn't do anything overly impressive in that fight. And that's actually why I thought he was going to lose to Stephen Thompson. And he didn't. He had a great game plan against Thompson. He took Thompson down. Thompson couldn't do anything. Uh, basically just smothered Thompson for the entire fight. Thompson had no answers, couldn't stop a takedown to save his life, and Bilal got the win there. So, But we saw in the fight after that with Thompson that that was, a, that was also an issue with him where he kept getting taken down in fights. And actually, sorry, it was the fight before that. I think he fought Burns, I think, before Bilal, right? Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, Burns and then Bilal. So there's, I mean, there was a clear path to victory there that Bilal, to his credit, executed where he just kept taking down Thompson. But again... While it was a great win and good game plan, I don't think it was the type of performance where he thought, okay, this is the guy to beat Usman or this is the guy to, to you know, fight for a title, so to speak. And then with Luque, um, Luque, again, just same thing, like just kept taking Luque down and, and out wrestling him. And, and that's great. But the, kind of the point I'm getting at here is that like this game plan will not work on Sean Brady because they're both good wrestlers. It's almost going to cancel each other out. So that's where maybe the fight stays standing. Who has the better stand up? It's very tough to say here, right? Because I think both guys have good stand up. Now, Bilal does have knockout wins, but as does Brady. Talked about some of those wins that he's had. I know he hasn't had any major ones in the UFC, but, um, you know, Brady in general does have not knockout power that we know of as well. Um, I think Bilal's last three wins are against guys that seem to be on the decline. Maya's not in the UFC anymore. Thompson's pretty much on his way out. And I think as we saw when Luke fought Jeff Neal, that Vicente Luque appears to be on the downfall as well. So I kind of feel like his wins are a little bit inflated. Now saying that, Sean Brady does not have any really good wins. Even the Chiesa win was not great considering how the third round, I'm, I think he clearly lost. Jake Matthews was a good win. But again, we don't know how good Matthews is either. So it's kind of tough to sort of gauge on there. Long story short, I'm going to go Sean Brady by decision. I just think the fact that I think I feel more comfortable picking him because I think there's more upside on Sean Brady. I think with what I think with what we've seen with Bilal at his age at 34, you know what you're getting here. We're getting a really good wrestler. But again, I think Brady is a very good wrestler himself. I think he's got the edge on the ground with being a black belt. And I think in the stand up, Brady can hold his own as well. So I think Sean Brady is going to win a three round decision here. I think it won't be close. I think it'll be decisive. I think it'll be a clear either 30, 27 or clear 29, 28 decision for Sean Brady in this fight. But I think Bilal's durable enough that he will go the three rounds in this fight and a bit of bad blood here. You know, I know Sean just speaking to him, very upset with some of the comments that Bilal's made, uh, you know, getting, you know, saying all types of stuff. And Brady's not that type of guy. He's a guy that just puts his head down, gets it done. I think that will also play into it a little bit because there's no distractions for Brady. He's not a, it's not on social media having arguments with, with fans and stuff. He's just in the gym training and stuff. So again, that's another reason why I think I, I like Sean Brady in this fight. So there we go. Uh, I want to know what you guys think in the comment section below. Who do you think wins? Again, more than happy to talk about the fights with you guys as long as you guys are being cool about it. And you know exactly what I mean. You know, no personal insults. No, you don't know what you're talking about. No, you're a casual, all that stuff. I'm not even going to entertain that. If you want to have a discussion with this fight, I will gladly give you that. But uh, I'm not going to sit here and uh, listen to people just, you know, trash people for an opinion. That's all it is. I, I'm one person with one opinion. I always have to remind people that I'm not an expert. I'm not, you know, anything special. I'm just someone who has an opinion on the fight. That's pretty much it. Um, follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Lynch on Sports. Once again, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell if you can. You do those three things. It really does help out the channel big time. And let me know some other fights you want me to preview. I think next week I'm going to be doing uh, the Benil Dariush and Mateos Gamrot fight. Going to cover all the big fights on UFC 280. I've also got UFC 281 coming up we've got all types of fights coming up for the rest of the year but i'm always open to hearing your suggestions for certain fights you want me to preview here on early look i'm james lynch thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next time